What is up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? It's your boy, Goblin, and today I'm coming in with a hoot and a holler. I hesitated a bit there. I didn't know if I wanted to call this a hoot and a holler, but it's a Goblin video. Of course it's a hoot and a holler. Hey, drop a like if you guys enjoy it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And listen, today I'm just, I'm outright explaining the stupidest thing I've ever done, okay? Look, I've done a lot of stupid things in my life. I'm humiliated to make this video, and I was I was really debating on not telling this story, but I knew that all of you guys already knew I went to the hospital. I had to explain why I've been MIA. You know, I can't just leave y'all hanging. Uh, and I, listen, I can't lie about. Okay, I couldn't think of any reason to make up. Honestly, straight up, I wanted to cap about this. Okay, but I genuinely could not think of any stupid bullshit reason. So here I am humiliating myself on the internet. Okay. This is the story of what got me sent to the ER. Now, listen, I might sound a little rough as well. Uh, I got, like, my flu shot, and now I have fucking coronavirus, dude. Uh, I, they gave it to me while I was in the hospital, and now my throat's scratchy. Dude, they infected me, all right? I, hey, test subject zero, boys. COVID vaccine, patient zero, boys. They gave it to me, all right? But, hey, this, listen, all I'm gonna say is this. Don't get drunk, don't do this shit, all right? Don't drink. This, listen, this is my stop drinking PSA, this whole video, okay? So... I stabbed myself in the knee with a screwdriver. Um, and a lot of you guys are probably going to ask, like, how I, why, you know, how. And here's what happened. So, honestly, it's not really that crazy how it went down. The crazy part is after, right? This was after I just finished streaming. You know, this is just a couple days ago. I think it was, like, three days ago. I've completely lost track of time with all the fucking, like, fentanyl they IV'd me and shit, dude. But listen, they, I'm not, they did actually IV me with fent, but we'll get to that later, okay? So, either way. I'm sitting there, and I'm chilling, and I'm gaming with a buddy of mine on Discord, right? And we're hanging out. I was playing some Kenshi, and I was just chatting with, a, you know, like a friend of mine on Discord, right? Just a casual conversation. Uh, and, you know, it's not like it was some lit night where I was out. You know, I just finished streaming, and I stayed up for a few hours after my stream. And I was chilling out, and my buddy was telling me about how he knew a guy who got stabbed with a screwdriver. And I was wasted. I, the, my whole stream I'd been drinking. You guys know my last live stream, I was fucked up at the end of that shit. I was obliterated, and I kept taking some yegs on Discord after that, dude. I was getting bussin', so I was absolutely obliterated, and he tells me this story, and I, I happen to have a screwdriver on my desk, right? I was building, like, a chair the other day. I also had to build, like, a cat tower for my cat, so I had a screwdriver at hand, right? He tells me this story, and I'm like, dude, like, there's no way a screwdriver is sharp enough to stab somebody, you know, like, that. I don't, I don't know why, like, that might be a reasonable thought, you know, looking at a screwdriver, like, you wouldn't assume you can impale somebody with that, unless you go really, you know, but it just doesn't look sharp, that's a drunk thought, right, so drunk me is like, hey, dude, there's no way a screwdriver is sharp enough, and then drunk me does the most self-destructive thing I've ever done, dude, I try it, bro, I, I honestly don't know, like, I was so wasted that I didn't go to the hospital for like three hours because I didn't feel anything at first, right? But we'll, we'll get to that, right? I was so wasted. I don't know what did. I was just, I didn't believe him. I was like, dude, there's no way, dude. I'm going to prove him wrong right now. I, I grabbed this screwdriver and I figure the worst that's going to happen is like, maybe I start bleeding, you know? Maybe like, oh, uh-oh, you know, I cut myself, you know, whoopsie. I grabbed this screwdriver and I go for the knee. I don't know why I did it, but I go for the fucking knee, dude. It's just, like, reaction. Like, you know, whenever you're mad at a game or whatever, you know, you kind of, like, slam your fist on your knee. You're like, fuck, dude, you know? I don't know why. It was just, like, it, like I just I went for the fucking knee, dude. And I shank myself in the knee with this screwdriver. And I pull it out, and there's, like, blood squirting out. And I realize I'm like, oh, fuck. And th listen needles and blood and all that kind of stuff, it, it, I get really lightheaded, right? Like, I get pretty nauseous, right? I just don't like it. So I see that, and immediately I like, get off Discord. I'm like, holy fuck. So I go and I like, grab a paper towel, and I put it over it, but I don't really feel any pain. Like, it, it wasn't like a, ah, you know, like, oh, this hurts. It was just like, oh, you know, I don't like blood. Let me go put a paper towel on this. And I, I thought, like, okay, maybe he wasn't lying. You know, I thought that was the end of this scenario, right? Like, okay, I'm an idiot. I just stabbed myself in the knee. Whatever. Like, I'm a dumbass. What I didn't realize was because I was drunk as fuck, I stabbed myself hard as fuck. Like, normal me would have just, like, like, nor like a sober person would not just shank themselves as hard as they can with a screwdriver. But I was so drunk, they didn't realize how much force I was putting into it. I fucking stabbed the shit out of my knee. So a few hours go by, and I'm sitting there. And I bend my knee. And listen, if those guys get grossed out easily, you're not going to want to listen to this part. 
I bend my knee and my leg's starting to feel really heavy. This is my left leg, mind you. The bot, like my calf starts to feel really heavy, almost like someone poured liquid in it. Like, I, like there was like a gallon of milk attached to my calf, right? And I bend my knee and it makes this like, oh, it's, it's so gross even just picturing it. This like gurgling sound, dude. It like there's clearly liquid or some shit. It's like it made like a gurgling sound. I realized really quick, I was like, dude, like... Like, I think I'm, like, bleeding, and I, I was so, I was still really drunk, but I was kind of sobering up, and I was, like, realizing, like, oh, my God, like, wait a minute, like, I'm, like, internally bleeding or some shit, like, this isn't right, you know? My other leg feels completely fine, my two legs feel very different right now, right? So I realized pretty quickly, I'm like, bro, like, I'm, I have to go to the fucking hospital, right? Like, I, there's just no way, I have to go to the hospital, right? So I, at this point, I was still walking. I think it was just adrenaline, but I was still walking, right? Like, I was literally able to walk all the way to my car, right? And, like, get in my car, and I drove to the hospital. Like, I drove myself, right? So I hop in my car. I whip over to the hospital. And at this point, I'm kind of I'm kind of freaking out. I'm not really drunk at this point. I was, I was sober as fuck because so much time had gone by that now the sun is up. It's like 6 a.m., 7 a.m. by the time I got admitted, right? And I walk and I went, remember, I park my car and I go to the main entrance and I tell the lady that I got stabbed in the knee with a fucking screwdriver. And she says, oh, you have to go around to the ER entrance. I say, you fucking bitch, dude. So I go around to the ER entrance, right? I, I get back in my car and I go to the ER entrance. And luckily I was still able to kind of, you know, hobble my way over really after the surgery. And like, even now, like I can't walk. I'm on crutches right now. But either way, so I go hobble over, I got, get back to my car, and I whip over to the other entrance, where the emergency room is, and I go in there, and I explain to the lady at the desk, you know, behind the glass, I'm like, yeah, like, I fucking shank myself with a screwdriver in the knee, right, so they get me back there and take my vitals, and I guess the way I explained it, I was kind of, like, downplaying it, I was just like, oh, yeah, you know, I just got a little cut, you know, like, I just kind of stabbed myself, you know, and no one really understood how serious this was until the doctor came in. Once the doctor came in and took a look at my knee, he's like, all right, so show me what you did. And I lift up the blanket. And he's like, oh, that's right on your knee. And he's like, we're going to need to get an x-ray done right now, right? So he sends a nurse back in. This lady takes me to get an x-ray. And at this point, you know, I got, I got Miss Gob. I, my lady is at the ER with me, right? I needed someone there. You know, I was, I was starting to, like, kind of feel the pain here, you know? But it still wasn't that bad, honestly. I was more just really uncomfortable. And the sound my knee was making every time I moved it was getting scarier and louder and more moist. So I was worried, right? So they, they give me x-rays, and the doctor comes back in. And he's like, yeah, dude, you punctured your kneecap, right? And... All the while, they were giving me all sorts of shit. I don't know what, like, drugs they were giving me or injecting me with because I was so out of it at this point. They, like, as soon as they got me in there, they got me on an IV and they, they put some shit in me. I didn't really know or ask. But after my, right, so they, they take me into surgery. And what they did is, uh, they, they told me that it punctured my kneecap, right? And the surgery part, I didn't really understand, honestly. I'm not good with this medical shit, so any, like, nurses out there, could you maybe explain what happened? There's no doctors watching this channel, but, like, a nurse, could you explain what happened to you? Listen, basically, the how the doctor explained it to me while I was all drugged up, and so this is my best recollection, is that I punctured my kneecap and there was air trapped in it. And they had to drain it and then wash out my kneecap and give me like a tetanus booster because it was a screwdriver, right? They, they had to rinse it out. They had to clear out all the air bubbles. Then they had to get the blood out of my leg too because they said I was also bleeding, right? So I'm like, okay, 100% phenomenal. Let's do that shit. They put me under anesthesia. The only thing I remember is they took me into the uh, like the surgery room, right? They moved me from my initial like ER bed. They just wheeled my ass over the emergency room. Put my ass on that anesthesia. I took two breaths. I was slumped, boy. Hey, I was out, dude. Listen, the only other time I've had a surgery like that in my life is when I was really, really young and I got my tonsils removed. Other than that, like, I've never broken a bone. I've never actually had, like, a surgery. I've been pretty fortunate. So this was, like, something I'm not used to at all. I don't, like, when I go to the hospital, it's because I took too many drugs. My parents, I listen, I go to the cuckoo hospital, okay? I, I don't go to the physical hospital, all right? So this was kind of new for me, right? So I get out of surgery, right? And and obviously the surgery, I don't really know how long it took. They told me it was going to be quick. But from, from the intel I gathered from Miss Goblin, it was not very quick, right? So either way, we, we get back into my, my new room, right? After my surgery, they wheel me into the new room. And I come to eventually. No idea how much time it went by. Because I was under anesthesia, dude. I was out like a light, bro. That should have me resting, dude. But I come to eventually. And my knee hurt like a... Bitch, the whole time I was literally like moaning, bro. Like I'm holding my knee and I'm like, oh, dude. 
And I remember the nurse, I just kept asking her to bring me ice packs. And they kept bringing me these shit ice packs that would melt after like 30 minutes. They literally get warm after 30 minutes, dude. It was it was hoopla. Not even 30, like 20. So the nurse, listen, I'm, I'm going off on a tirade. This isn't even relevant to the story. But listen, the nurse that I had got irritated with me asking for new ice packs every time they got warm. And she, well, I called at one point and I asked for like my fourth or fifth ice pack. She's like, didn't I just give you one ice she gave me that fuck. Shorty was lucky I was on drugs, okay? She was lucky my knee was punctured, or else I would have been pissed, okay? But listen, she could have tortured me if she wanted to. So I let it slide. I just said, please, bring me, like, you're getting paid for this, dude. Come on, like, bring, like, it's just an ice pack, dude. I'm not asking you to play with my nuts. Like, please, dude, come on, you know? It's not that hard. So either way, I am obviously calling for ice packs. And I'm also, every time the nurse comes back, they keep giving me other painkillers. And honestly, I think the reason they kept giving me other painkillers was just to try to shut me up. Like, my nurse was low-key a bitch, dude. Like, she seemed really irritated with me, bro. Every other time I've been to a hospital, like, I've never had it for surgery, you know? Maybe I was being kind of needy, but like, bro... I shanked myself with a screwdriver in the kneecap. Like, come on, bro. I need an ice pack. You know what I'm saying? So they start giving me all types of painkillers. They gave me a narco at one point. Uh, There's a bunch that I don't remember because they had me hooked up to the IV. At one point, they gave me fentanyl. And I remember I made a comment. I was like, oh, I've never done fent before, you know? And she looks at me. And I realized real quick, like, yo, if I keep getting excited over all these painkillers in front of them and, like, making these comments, they're going to stop giving it to me, right? Because every time they give me a painkiller, like, at one point, I remember she she mentioned she was like this one might give you a bit of a warm feeling and it was this painkiller that started with a d i don't, I don't remember what it was someone on twitter told me the day uh delauded i think it's called it they they said they told me it was the strongest one they had but she was like this one's gonna give you a warm feeling and i look at it and i was like i love those <laughs> and after that they <laughs> They cut my ass off the painkillers real quick. They said, hey, bruh, an ice pack will do for now. So that was, but they got me zooted off that shit, dude. They were, they were giving me IV Fent. They were giving me IV, what is it, Dilaudid, I think I said, whatever it's called. I don't know. They gave me Narcos, dude. They gave me these ice packs. So, you know, eventually my, my pain kind of dies down after they gave me that Dilaudid stuff, right? Miss Goblin has to leave and I'm alone for the evening. And uh, conveniently, I thought ahead and I brought my G-Pen right? I brought my little G-Pen Rome to the hospital with a nice little gram of some wax, right? So I'm chilling there and I'm kind of thinking to myself, I'm like, you know, I could probably make this work, you know? And they they had written on the doors each of the times that they were going to come in and check on me. So I knew exactly when they were going to come. So I was like, you know what? If I don't call, they're going to pull up, you know? Like I know when they're coming. I can pull this off easily, right? So they have this bathroom attached to my room with a door, right? So I waited until right after I got my my IV, and they kept giving me antibiotics as well. That's another thing uh, to prevent like an infection or anything, because obviously I, I put a screwdriver through my knee. You know that that could get dirty. You know they they uh they needed to make sure that I didn't get an infection, so they were IVing me with some antibiotics, all types of shit. I even got a shot in my stomach to prevent blood clots. Tons of shit, dude. And I I still have to inject myself in the stomach every day for the next nineteen days, nineteen fucking days of injections. I I hate needles, dude. I'll, I'll get to that later. So. Either way, I go over to the bathroom after I get my last, you know, my my last little antibiotic injection, you know, and I I pull up in the bathroom, I bust out my G-Pen, and I sit on the toilet, and I smack my G-Pen, I'm like, you know what, if she comes in, I'm just gonna tell her, honestly, I just took that grand dookie nurse, honestly, I just took that omega shit, right, like the biggest one ever, just the most major shit I've ever taken, right, so I'm sitting in there, I'm smacking the fuck out of this G-Pen, dude, I'm going cuckoo, I I drop a nice little dab, I had this strain called the Great Hata, and also brought some GG4, and I I dropped some Great Hata in there, smack that shit, hey, I was feeling good, I needed that, bro, and granted, honestly, listen, no shade to G-Pen. It doesn't, it doesn't give you the biggest dabs. It ain't, it don't hit like my e-nail, but it did enough. It did enough, okay? And that's all I needed, right? That's all I needed. I smacked that shit. I was feeling wonderful. I was feeling lit, boys. I was feeling spectacular, dude. And after that, I remember I went and laid back in my bed and I wasn't supposed to get out of my bed. They told me multiple times, like, call us if you need help, but there was a walker right beside my bed. So you bet your ass I'm getting the fuck out of my bed, no matter how much pain I'm in, because I could still limp with a walker right so I made it you know I kind of hobble back I get in bed and I get in slowly you know like literally guys 
I could not really move my knee in any direction. So it took me maybe 10 minutes to get out of the bed, 10 minutes to sit on the toilet. I had to do everything in a very specific way. And I had to kind of like lightly fall onto things. Like if I wanted to sit down, I can't really bend my knee. So I kind of had to like fall back onto them, you know? It was it was kind of scary at points. But I can I have a lot more motion in my leg now. Like I can sit in chairs easily now, you know? I just can't really walk around right now. But either way. I take that dab and I get back in bed and that, that shit that they, that delauded or whatever just knocked me the fuck out. Combined with the dab, I'm out of there, dude. I fucking slumped, boys. ZZZs were catching them, dude. It was beautiful. But hey, honestly, we're going to need to part two of this one because I got to continue this, dude. We're not done yet. I still got to talk about the prescriptions they gave me and shit, right? Hey, they hooked, hey, hey. Who knew the doctor was the plug? Hey, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Drop a like if you do. Let me know if you, in the comments if you're ready for part two. And also, we're watch partying Borat 2 on Twitch tonight. Follow me on Twitch. Link in the description. I'll see you guys there. Peace out, gamers. Hope you enjoyed. See you all next time.